Hey everyone, if you haven't seen it yet, I recently released the trailer for RuneScape Party. You can check it out from the linked card if you haven't already. And I just wanted to make a little video to talk about what the game is, how it works, and how you can play. Because you heard that right. You can partake in a game of RuneScape Party. All you have to do is join the Discord server, linked in the description of the video, and let me know that you want to play. So far I have one other player signed up who's just as hyped as I am to organise the first ever game, but we need two more people to get things going. After that, the games will still more than likely be open to my viewers, and I'd love to collaborate with other creators too. So if there's anyone you watch who you think might like RuneScape Party, feel free to send it in their direction. I'm not saying send this to Settled, Solo or Booty, they'd be more than welcome of course, but more so to any smaller creators like myself who might be looking to grow through collaborations. Anyway, the point is, this is an open invitation. I'm dying to organise our first ever game, so please head to the server and sign up if you're interested. This isn't a super competitive thing, it really is just about having fun, doing some silly activities and hopefully ending up with a sick video as a result. It's worth saying I would expect a session of this to last up to 5 or 6 hours, as there are a lot of games to play and things to do along with transitional time as we prepare for challenges, etc. But of course we'd have breaks and such throughout that, I need my smoke breaks, I'm sure people need toilet breaks. It happens. So I, yeah, I'd expect it to go on a little bit, just be prepared to reserve a fair chunk of a day for whenever we do play. With all that being said, there are some requirements in-game needed in order to participate, so let's take a look at those. Alright, so these aren't too high, I don't think. You have to have full access to Priftiness and Valamore, which means completing each of the quests in Valamore except for Ribbiting Tail, which is three quests, plus Children of the Sun to get there, plus the whole quest elf quest line up to Song of the Elves, including Song of the Elves. There are some times in the game where you'll be going to the Gauntlet or Zalkana or Perilous Moons, so they're not always going to come up, but it might happen, so you'll need full access to both of those on whichever account you're playing on, and it's recommended to have around level 70 skills, but it's, that's a recommendation, not a requirement. There's no time where you'll specifically need that, but you might suffer if a lot of your skills are a lower level in comparison to other people. They'll just be able to get stuff done more efficiently, right? So, yeah, just... I would recommend around a base 70 level, but it's not it's not strict. You know, someone asked me about rune crafting. You're not gonna need 70 rune crafting specifically. Like I can't imagine much rune crafting being done in in <laughs> a party, but who knows? Maybe someone who really loves rune crafting does end up doing it. Anyway, base 70 skills is what I'd recommend. And this account that you're having these requirements on can be an Iron Man, it's absolutely fine. I do require separately an account without trade restrictions, as you can see just above my head right now. But that doesn't have to be the main account that you're using. That account can be a free-to-play account even. There's only one challenge where you need an account without trade restrictions and it doesn't matter what level it is, it can be free to play. I don't want to give away that one, but you just need an account, a burner account for it. Like It doesn't have to be anything that special. And it can be your main account if you're not trade restricted on your main account. You just need one account without trade restrictions. But that doesn't mean your main account that you're playing on has to have trade restrictions. Just want to clarify that. You'll need the gear from the Tribrid PvP setup, which I'll go over in just a moment on the next slide. Some pocket change, so I don't know, a couple hundred K, just in case. I can't see that you'll need a lot of money for very many challenges, but you might need a budget for some. And then there's some other standard items, or not standard items necessarily, but some items that get used in one or more of the challenges that it would be handy for you to have ready in your bank before we start. Adamant full helm, plate, body and legs black plate body and plate legs. I'm not sure if I actually took the full helm off there, but can't harm to have it. I'm not sure if you need the full helm though. I'll have to go and have a look at all the challenges. The goblin paint cannon, which you can get from Django and Drona village. It's very cheap. Runes, wine, regular wine this is. Stamina, prayer pots, papayas, sharks and karambwans. Basically just an assortment of supplies there. Potions as well is something you will want access to. That being said, I can provide things to an extent to people as long as they don't have trade restrictions. I 
would have to drop trade myself, but yeah, if you if you don't have some papayas or whatever, then I can give you some papayas if that challenge comes up. And finally, a butterfly net and six implin jars. And then there is the tribrood PvP setup that I mentioned. So this is what we are looking at. Generally, any downgrades are fine. Upgrades are not. So you can't bring an infused magic short bow. You can't bring a a berserker ring because it's just not on the list but all of this other stuff like if you don't have the fighter torso you can trade it for a rune plate body if you don't have the ancient scepter you can trade it for an ancient staff Avers can be any variant and the rune pouch is completely optional but obviously if you don't have the pouch you're probably going to end up sacrificing some potions or other supplies at some point in one of these. I've gone for these three, you can bring super combats as well. If everybody has access to them then we can use them, if not then we'll use the, the split sets. Yeah that is pretty much everything that you need. If you meet all these requirements and have this gear then you can play. Please come and sign up. How do you play is the next question. Well, there are 10 rounds of gameplay in a party, with each round having a phase where players take turns to roll a dice and move on the board, resolving the effects of the space they land on. I got this little dice slides thing here, where you can just click roll, and it rolled a 1 in this case, so let's say the first player, green player here, it moves one space onto this blue tile. Okay, I picked up the wrong one, but oh well, we'll say it's the pink player's turn. A blue space gives you plus 3 GP, Red space gives minus 3 GP, and green spaces all have their own unique effect corresponding on a table on a different slide I've got, uh, but I'm not going to reveal those until they get landed on for the first time for the element of surprise. And yeah, GP is useful, you can spend it at shops and you can buy party hats with it, which I'll get to in just a moment. I don't know why I changed the blue one when it was the pink one that ended up moving, but whatever, let's say the pink one got 3 GP. Yeah, and then there's the party hat spaces here, which there will be a wise old man at one of them randomly at the start of the game. And any player that passes through a party hat space where the wise old man is can pay him 20 GP to buy a hat, which is how you win the game. Let's say they had 20 and now the flat broke. They moved over there. Yeah, <laughs> if they go up there, they have to get there first. Uh, if the player buys a heart, the wise old man will then move to one of the other two party heart spaces at random and chill there until somebody bumps into him and buys a new hat. Finally, the yellow squares here and here represent shops, which any player passing through can visit. They're not a space that you can land on, but if you pass through the yellow square, you get to go to that shop. There are a number of items that you can purchase at a shop, three in each of them. They each have a unique effect which you can use on a future turn. Again, I'll keep them a surprise until the first time someone visits said shop, but these are the items that are available. We've got some, some of Bob's axes and the general store has a, a selection of random things that might be useful in your journey. After everyone's rolled, moved and resolved the effects, it's time for the main event, the mini game. Depending on where everyone landed, a random 1v1v1v1, 1v1, 1v1, 1v3 or 2v2 game will be selected. The way the type is determined is based on who landed on red or blue spaces that round, with players on green spaces being randomly set to either red or blue. Once the type is determined, its wheel will be spun and a mini game will be chosen. So in this example here, everybody's on a blue space, that would mean it's a 1v1v1v1 game. If someone was on a red space over here, that would make it a 1v3, and if there were two players on red spaces, that would make it a 2v2. If one of the players was on a green space, they would roll a dice, say, odds is they are blue, it was odds, so this person is blue, this person is blue, and these two are red, which makes it a 2v2 game in that example. So let's go to the wheel. So we've got a wheel for each one of the types, Let's say it's a 2v2 game, spin the wheel, do the example. I will reveal one of the games here for the first time. Detective Duo, number 30. Which means I go to my PowerPoint over here and we go to slide number 30, that is Detective Duos. Each person must complete a clue. Both of you have to do a clue before the other team in order to win. You can use anything in your bank, but you have to obtain the clue itself during the challenge. It can be of any level. 
and both players must complete a clue of any level before the opposing team to win. Simple. That's around like what the mini games are. They're meant to be like 10 to 20 minutes each, maybe even shorter in some cases, but they're not meant to be particularly long. So we'll end up doing a mini game and then players are rewarded based on how well they did using uh, the this these prize pools so in a 2v2 game the winning game would get 20 gp each i don't want to go through them all here you can see if you if you want to you can pause the video after that the round's done you go back to the board for the next movement first players move in the same order for the duration of the game which is determined randomly at the start of the party after 10 rounds, the player with the most party hats is the winner, with GP being used for tiebreakers when needed. That's pretty much all there is to it, but there is one final twist, and that's the final battle. Instead of a minigame, round 10 will end with a final battle. The player currently in last place is offered the choice between 5 final battles, but they only have the name to go off. I guess it'll be someone other than me, because I will know more than the name to go off. <laughs> So it'll be the person who's in last other than me. These are designed to be slightly lengthier challenges, maybe close to 45 minutes. I've, I've used that as an upper limit, I think, for the final challenge. It's like 45 minutes. I don't want it to be longer than that. And as a result, the winner of the final battle will win a full free party heart for the trouble. No GP rewards on this one. It is the last thing that happens in the game before we check the scores. So it's meant to be like a big finish and hopefully they should give us some fun, slightly more in-depth challenges as well to, to cap things off at the end of a party. So that's it. That's the whole party explained. Hopefully this video convinces a couple more people to sign up so we can get the first party going and have some fun. I'm really looking forward to it myself. I want to make this a thing simply because I'm excited to play it. But I know it's going to be for some banger content too in the process. Make sure to hit that like button and leave a comment down below. It helps more people find the video so we can really get this party started. And if you haven't already hit the subscribe button, go do it. It's free and let's keep up to date with everything here on my channel. All that being said, take care of yourselves, look after each other, and I'll see you on the next one.